Welcome back here on the Senior Network. Natalie, you were giving us some great information. It made me think, I was looking at your, your website on Optimal the other day and I noticed some things I didn't realize. You guys actually, if someone comes to you and needing hearing aid or they want to be evaluated uh, and they decide to move forward, you have a, actually a trial period that you let them use that, right? Absolutely. I think, um, you know, it's important for people to find the right fit for them when it comes to hearing aids. And so we do offer a 30-day trial period. I always tell patients 30-ish days. Yeah. You know, if you're on the fence, that's, that's something that we can change or adapt. I'm extending a trial period right now because of Hurricane Dorian, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. People need time. Um, hearing aids aren't one and done. You need time for your brain to adapt to them. Um, and so you're not going to know the first time you put on hearing aids how well they're working for you, and you're not going to hear optimally the first second you put on a hearing aid. Right. It's, a, it's a lot for the brain. No different than, say, progressive lenses. Right. You know, the first time people put on progressive lenses, they may be bobbleheads. You know. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. I can imagine, just thinking about you, talking about vision, I mean, and, and come, someone comes to you, I bet, I bet it's an eye-opener sometimes for folks that really did not realize how much hearing loss they had. Definitely it's an eye-opener sometimes for folks, um, it, for families as well. Yeah. And it can also be a very emotional experience. I've had people break down when you put hearing aids on them mm. because they don't always realize what they're missing until they realize what they've been missing. Exactly. Sure. And um, so it can be emotional right. um, for the entire family as well as the person with hearing loss. Now, do you offer any type of warranties with your products? Hearing aids come with warranties. Okay. They typically range from one to three years. Um, with us, what is so important is that lifetime care and service and providing the same level of service uh, towards the end of the life of the hearing aids as you are in the first month or the first year. Um, hearing aids require routine care and maintenance. Sure. There are mm -hmm. earwax and skin cells and dandruff and pollen in the air right. and all of these things affect the performance of hearing aids. Very good information. Um, Darlene, yes. I um, ran into one of your volunteers yesterday. It made me think about that organization is, uh, just intrigues me. It's amazing that you guys have put together out there. We have so many volunteers and they, you know, I hear from people all the time, I don't think I could volunteer for hospice. That seems very depressing. Yeah. But they get involved in other ways. They work in the office, they help with events, they do the pet therapy. You know, we just have so many programs, and the volunteers give so much time to us. We are really lucky. I would I mean, imagine that's rewarding. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah if the could time, do it, it would be, definitely. Yeah. We have vigil volunteers who will sit with a patient so, you know, kind of no patient has to go alone. Yeah. Sure. And so they'll sit and do shifts. So important. Yeah. It's pretty amazing, you know. Do your volunteers actually kind of help provide the care, too? Not care. Not care, okay. They will sit with the patient, they'll read, they'll play games, they've taken patients to the store, they've taken them to doctor's appointments, they've done different things, but they're not giving that hands-on care. So when care. it gets to that level, then that's when you would refer to like right at home or someone for the care, correct? Exactly, yes. Where the expertise when, is kind of needed. Yeah. Yes, the nurses are really good about saying this, you know, you need more in the home. Because right. hospice is not 24-7. Sure. So, you know, we go a lot. I think we go more than most do because we are nonprofit. Oh, yeah, do, so I, yes. our nurses will be there every day if they need to. We have CNAs on the weekends as well, and you know, weekend nurse, night nurse. But they're really good about saying you need some more help. Yeah. And helping them realize that, it, generally speaking, they can afford it. Yeah. You know, it's not yeah. so unachievable sure. for most people. So, okay. yeah. Great information. Natalie, um, I know we talked about it, but for the viewers that may not have seen that, tell us a little bit about the areas that you actually service as far as the Optimal Hearing Center here. Mm -hmm. We are family owned and operated primarily through um, Georgia, South Carolina, expanding into Florida. Okay. I have uh, My main office is in Bluffton. I'm there four days a week. And then I go to Hilton Head one day a week every Thursday just for people who don't want to cross the bridge. Great. Um, and then we've also got offices in Savannah and surrounding area as well. So um, we're expanding uh, and we've got offices in Charleston. Right. So we've, we're quite a bit through the low country. Got a great reputation. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank we really you. appreciate it. Well, Natalie, great. that's all the time we have. Darlene, thank you both so much thank for joining thank us you. today. Thank you. Thank you. If you would, please take a moment, email us any comments, questions that you may have for us. And I want to thank you all for joining us here on the Senior Network, where senior care experts come together. We'll see you the next time.